Hi guys, welcome back to Top Tips Graphics. It's my first time I am visualizing myself in front of you. So first of all, let me introduce myself. Who am I? I'm Ramis. I'm working here in UAE and my native place is in India, Kerala. So guys, today onwards, we are going to start a series of video tutorial regarding the graphic designing education training classes. You know, in the market, there is a lot of softwares using for the graphic designings. But one of the most common software used in the graphic designings in a universal level, it's Adobe softwares. So Adobe softwares, it's a package of softwares, including Adobe Premium, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, InDesign's, Dreamweaver and so on. Even though all these softwares are coming under the Adobe company, each and every softwares are entirely different from each other. It's based on the uh, platform that which you are using for. For example, Adobe Dreamweaver, it's using for the web designing. Adobe Premium Pro for the video editing, Adobe Illustrator for the flat designings and so on. In this series, we are starting with the Adobe Illustrator tutorial. So what is Adobe Illustrator? And one of the common doubts among the beginners of the graphic designers is what is the difference between the Adobe Illustrator and the Adobe Photoshop? So before we are going through the Adobe Illustrator tutorial, let me give you a brief description what's the difference between the Adobe Illustrator and the Photoshop. So the first thing, Adobe Illustrator is a software which is used to create or edit the vector file while the Photoshop is a software which is used to create or edit the raster images or the photos. That is, Illustrator is a vector-based software while the Photoshop is a pixel-based software. So let me clarify what's the difference between the vector file and the pixel-based images with the assemble. So let's go through that. Here we have two files in the desktop. Both are the same file with the different format. One is the vector file in the SVG format and the other one is the normal pixel photo in the JPEG format. First, let's look the features of the pixel photo file by opening it in the Adobe Photoshop. So just open this file in the Adobe Photoshop. Here we open the raster based photo file. Now this file is in 100% edge sizes. That is, this is the maximum and the fixed quality of this file. When we zoom in this file, we can see the quality of this file is decreasing gradually. When we reach up to the maximum zooming, we can see the small square pixel units with the unique colors as shown here. This group of pixels make a complete photo. Such photos are known as the raster images or the pixel based images. The example for such raster based images are our normal photographic photos. So the Photoshop is the software used to create or edit such raster images. Now let's go through the vector file features. For that, let's open the vector file in the Adobe Illustrator as shown here. Here we open the vector file with the same logo design. Now if you zoom in up to the maximum as we did over the raster image, we can recognize that this quality of file is not changing on the gradual zooming. And once it reaches the maximum zooming, we can see the edges of the designs with the smooth curves. That means a vector graphics will never lost its quality if it's scaled up or down. So the Illustrator is a software which is used to create or edit such vector graphics. Examples for the vector-made graphic designs are logos, icons, cartoon characters, etc. So I hope that you guys get the basic idea about the difference between Illustrator and the Photoshop. So let's conclude the difference between Illustrator and the Photoshop with a short summary. Illustrator is a vector-based software, where Photoshop is a pixel-based software. Illustrator used to create or edit the logos, icons, cartoon character, etc. Where Photoshop used to create or edit photographic images, magazine photos, etc. Illustrator formats are .svg, .ai, .eps, etc. Where Photoshop formats are .jpg, .gif, .png, etc. So now let's start with our main topic, Adobe Illustrator Tutorial. Here I am using the Adobe Illustrator CC version. Even though it's not the latest version, I think it's kind of better for the beginners. If you are using the latest version and get to any doubt about our tutorial, just feel free to comment under the comment boxes. This is the interface of the Adobe Illustrator. It's something similar to the Photoshop's interface. Here on the left side, you can see the toolbar. 
it's including with the different tools for different process in the designing and on the right side it's the panel that we can minimize or expand as per our usage now i am just leaving the details of the each panels i will give you the details of each panels in upcoming another videos now let's start with the new page for creating the new page just go to the file menu and select the new also you can use the short key control n now you will get your options for document settings like this here you can set the measurement of the new page unit of the measurement orientation of the page color mode of the page and so on if you are using the latest version of illustrator you will get the more advanced option in this document with the ready made templates and all but the basic setup it will be same like this as an example here i am creating the page of measurement a4 size with the horizontal orientation now you can see the new pages in a4 sizes and this white portion is known as artboard in the illustrator even though we can create the designs outside the artboard this artboard is the main workspace of the illustrator now let's go through the selection tool this is the selection tool which is placed on the top of the toolbar in black color arrow icon it is the most important tool in the adobe illustrator you can also see a same icon with the white color near the selection tool it's the direct selection tool that we can discuss in the next video also you can select the selection tool by using the short key letter v now let's discuss about the functions of the selection tool so for explaining about the functions of the selection tool we need some designs or the shape on the artboards so first let's draw some basic shapes on the artboard using the shape tools before going through the shape drawing i will give you the idea about the main core of the illustrator that is the fill color and the stroke that is here you can see the white square with the fill color and the black square with the borders so if you are drawing or creating any designs or object in the illustrator it will be in fill color or with the borders or both of them this complete patch color is known as the fill color and the border is known as the stroke we can also change the color of the fill color or the stroke by double clicking over these squares now here i change the fill color into the green color and the stroke into the pink color so whatever and now i draw in the page it will come with the green body and the pink borders now let's draw a rectangle shape with this color combination for that move the cursor to the shape tool as shown here if there is a small arrow mark over the tool as like this it means there is more sub tools under that tool for getting that just press and hold over the tool icon so you will get the sub tool like this here you can see many sub tool for drawing the common basic shapes here we selected the rectangle tool and draw a box by clicking and dragging to a certain area here you can see the rectangle with the fill and stroke color also we can adjust the stroke border thickness from this option you can also remove the stroke and the fill color by clicking over this none option by using the same process let's draw some more shapes with the different colors ellipse circle and all also not that for drawing the circle use the ellipse tool and hold the shift button while drawing so you will get the circle ellipse also you can use the same process over the rectangle tool for getting the square shape there is much more thing to explain about the shape tools so i will describe the further details in upcoming series and another important tool used in illustrator frequently is zoom tool zoom tool is used to zoom in and for zoom out the particular object or the designs for detailed editing for selecting the zoom tool we can use the short key letter z also and for zoom in you can click the particular area continuously after selecting the zoom tool and for zoom outing press and hold the alt key while clicking the zoom tool also we can zoom in or the zoom out the pages while we are using any other tool by using the short key control minus or the control plus as shown here but this we cannot apply over any particular area and another frequent using tool in the illustrator is the hand tool this tool is used for moving the complete pages including the artboard and the designs for our comfortability this we can use at any time by just pressing and holding the space button now let's back to our selection tool the main function of the selection tool is as its name itself for selecting a object or a group of object for an example here i am selecting this rectangle by the selection tool just clicking over that rectangle for deselecting the object you can turn by just clicking outside the selected object like this 
Another option of the selection is the group selection. This is done by click and hold the cursor outside the design and drag up to the area that we need to select. So here we can see a virtual box on that area. After that release the cursor. Then up to that area it will be selected. And here we can do the further process of moving or the resizing the selected objects. And if we need to select the particular objects from different area, we have to press and hold the shift button while selecting. So we can select the multi numbers of the objects from different area as shown here. For undo any last process, you can use the common short key control Z. And for redo, use the short key control shift plus Z. Once you selected any particular object or the designs, you can see a box around the selected area. This box is known as the bounding box. Also you can see six nodes around the bounding box. These nodes are used to resizing the selected objects. If you keep your cursor on any corner of the bounding box, you will get a cross arrow like this. So here you can resize the object by the width or the height wise or both of them as shown here. If you want to adjust the object size by the height wise, just to keep the cursor on the top or the bottom of the nodes of the bounding box. Here you can adjust the size by the height wise like this. Same thing we can apply over the right and the left nodes for adjusting the size by the width of the object. Another function in the resizing of the object is the proportional resizing. That means if you want to resize the object with the same ratio it have been, you have to press and hold the shift button while resizing with the mouse as shown here. Also you can apply this over any nodes of the bounding box. One more features of the resizing is by using the alt button. That is if you need to resize any object uniformly on both sides, just press and hold the alt button while resizing. So you can see the both sides extending uniformly. Another features coming under the bounding box is the curve making nodes. If you are selecting this rectangle, you can see four nodes inside the bounding box on the four corners. And if you move the cursor on the top of the nodes, you could see a curves icon on the bottom of the selection tool. And if you click and drag that nodes towards inside, you can see all the corners changing into the curves. This we can apply on all the types of the object which having the corners. For an example, here I am drawing a rough object by using the pen tool with many corners. After that, just select that object with the selection tool. If there is no curves making nodes, just press and hold the control button so it will be visible on all the corners. Now you can process the curve making functions. Only the matter is by using the selection tool, we cannot make the curves on the individual corners. For that, we have to use the direct selection tool that I will discuss with you in the upcoming series. Another function of the selection tool is to move the object or the designs from a position to our required position. It is done by just clicking and dragging the object with the mouse cursor. Also you can move the object with a specific measurement by another method. For this, first just select the object that we need to move and after that just press the enter button. Here you will get the option panel for moving the object and we can set the measurement of the path that we have to move the object. Then enable the preview as shown here to get the moving position. Now press OK to move the object. Also you can copy the object to that position by just clicking over this copy button. Another function of the selection tool is the rotation of the object. We can rotate selected object by using the mouse cursor. For that, after selecting any object, just move the cursor outside and very near to the resizing nodes. So you can see the cursor as a bent icon. Then just click over there and you can rotate the object into any angle as shown here. If you press and hold the shift button while doing the rotation, you could rotate the object with an angle of 45 degree differences. Let's delete all the content and clear the artboard first. In this blank artboard, let's draw a new rectangle shape with any color as shown here. Now let's look how to copy the object by using the cursor. For that, just press and hold the alt button while dragging the selected object to any position. By using this process, we can copy any object to any position as shown here. And if you need to copy the object in a straight position, you have to press and hold the shift alt button. Using this shift and alt button, we can copy the object to straight, vertical or even to the 45 degree angle as shown here. 
Another useful short key for the selection tool is the Ctrl D. By using this short key, we can repeat the last process done by the selection tool. Here for an example, I am making a single copy of this rectangle. After that, if we repeat the pressing of the short key Ctrl T, this rectangle will continuously copy it up to the count of that we press the Ctrl T. Also, this process is applicable for the movement of the object. That is, if we move an object one time and continue with the Ctrl T short key, then the object will repeat moving with the same distance and the angle. Now let's copy some rectangle and show you another function of the selection tool. It's grouping. We can group the selected object by just right click the mouse button and selecting the group option. Also we can use the short key Ctrl G. After grouping all the grouped object will selected in a single click as shown here. We can also ungroup the grouped object by right click the mouse button and selecting the ungroup option. Another function of the selection tool is clipping mask the object with another object. For an example, let's use this rectangle and draw another object over this rectangle. Here I am using the ellipse shape with the different color codes. Now select the both the object by pressing and holding the shift button. After that, keep the cursor over that object and right click the mouse button. So you can see the options make clipping mask. Just select that. So your first object will be masked with the second object as shown here. On keeping the cursor on that masked object, you can see the first object as a virtual box. Now for releasing the clipping mask, select that object and right click the mouse button so you will get the options for releasing the clipping mask. So guys, at last I hope that here we completed almost all the functions of the tool. If you are familiar with any other functions of the selection tool, please comment under the comment boxes. Now let's summarize the functions of the selection tool. Functions of the selection tools are selecting the designs, moving the designs, rotating the designs, copying the objects, curves making on the corners, grouping and ungrouping the objects, clipping mask and release clipping masks. Now let's do a simple project by using all these functions of the selection tool. Also practice yourself with your own creative ideas for applying over this function. So practice, practice and again practice. Practice will make you perfect. So guys, here we completed our first classes of Adobe Illustrator tutorial by giving you a detailed explanation about the selection tool. So if you are waiting for the next upcoming series, don't forget to subscribe our channel and press bell icon for getting new the latest notification. Thank you.